Welcome. Welcome to Celebrate Aging. I'm Vicki Marthaler, and I'm going to tell you today about a wonderful opportunity you have in June to come to Emanuel Community, to our Forest Conference Center, so that you can participate in a wonderful afternoon. It's called Art for the Ages, and Art for the Ages has been one of our annual celebrations now for a few years, and this year we are focusing on Native American art. And we have a beautiful poster here. It's or actually it's a painting or a drawing. It's called Mother Earth's Circle. And it is a beautiful picture here of a Native American person in the full regalia. And it has circles. It's facing the circles of infancy, youth, adulthood, and elder. And a lot of symbolism on this picture. We've got the bears, we've got the horses. It's going to be one of these wonderful afternoons when we can gather and learn about Native American culture. And not just looking at paintings and drawings, but also we're going to have an interactive part where you're actually going to be able to make and take an item. We are going to have food. We are going to have music. We are going to have all different kinds of things. Now, Sandy Lee is in charge of the day. She is organizing it, and she sent me a note, so I want to share with you some of the things we will be doing on Art for the Ages, which is going to be on June 9th. June 9th, here at the Emanuel Forest Conference Center. It's going to start at 1.30 in the afternoon, and it goes until 6 o'clock, so it's a full afternoon that we are inviting you. It doesn't cost anything. We just want you to come and spend the afternoon on June 9th. And this is what's going to go on. We are going to have some wonderful artists. A painter, Joyce Jackson Arndt, is going to be with us. We are also going to have Lee Harper, who draws and paints, and a photographer, Diane Kears. Then Don Norton will be here beading, talking about beading of jewelry and applying beads to the regalia that is worn like at the powwows and the special sacred times. And so she'll be telling us about the beading and the jewelry uh, on the outfits, including moccasins and uh, the leather purses. She also works with porcupine quills. Can you imagine? How fun is that? She has porcupine quills that she dyes them, but makes them different colors and fashions them into leather purses and into the baskets. So we are going to be really excited to see uh, Joyce and Lee, Diane and Don all working on such special things. And then one of our own, one of our own uh, staff people here, her name is Karina. She does amazing beadwork. Oh, I can't wait for you to see what she does. I wanted to interview her today, but she's on the shy side. She says, no, she can't be in front of a TV camera. <laughs> but let me tell you, you will not be disappointed. You come on June the 9th here for our Art for the Ages, and Karina will have on display some of her beaded work, and it is beautiful, breathtaking. She is also going to do the very special, we're calling it Make and Take. And so you are going to be able to participate in making uh, a Native American item and take it home with you. And I have just a little example. It isn't anything like what you're going to be making. Uh, it, you're going to be making something uh, from grapevines and everything else. But uh, we're going to tell you about dream catchers. And you, maybe you've seen these from time to time in different places. Maybe you have one of your own, and maybe you should. Dream catchers, this is uh, just a little uh, example of one that I have. But dream catchers are, let me read to you a little bit about them as uh, we think about this. Dream catchers are an authentic American Indian tradition. And they come from the Ojibwe tribe, or the Chippewa tribe. And what it is, it's a circle. So many things are in circles in the Native American culture. And it is reminiscent of, uh, it's patterned after a spider web. And there are eight places on that it's tied to the ring, uh, tied to the circle. And spiders are uh, 
uh, tell us about the energy, a good energy. As you know, if you've ever been uh, up early in the morning when there are uh, dew, when it's like one of those heavy, beautiful summer days, and, and you see the, the webbing in the, like the tree branches or on fence posts, and they're heavy with dew and they just glisten in the morning sun and you see all the webbing that have been accomplished by spiders uh, throughout the night and the day just intricate and exotic almost so beautiful well spiders are, are are a good energy because they are making beautiful things all the time and so we have this web that is made in a circle and Dream catchers tell us that the bad dreams, the, uh, the bad energy, the, the fears that we have get caught in the web and they can't come to us then when we sleep. But the circle in the middle allows for those good dreams to come forth and they make us restful and they create positive energy. They, they touch us and blanket us and let us be restful so in the morning we arise and we are ready for the day. Uh, the feathers, let me read a little more here now, so I, I don't want to be telling you stories, I want to be telling you the truth here. Uh, the feathers hang from the netting and they, uh, they uh, flow in the air, remind us of the, the, the breath of God, the, the great spirit about us who breathes on us and brings us uh, energy and renewal. So it's wonderful. Oftentimes you'll find that they are hung over a baby's crib, that the, the baby would only be touched with all the good, the dreams and the good breath of God that comes upon that baby. Uh, so the, the feathers and the webbing are all around this circle and it is meant for good. It is meant for good. Uh, the, the one reading I put said that the traditional dream catcher has eight points where the web attaches to the circular hoop, representing the eight legs of the spider. The spider is symbolic of female creative energy, wisdom, and learning. So that's it's a wonderful thing. So anyway, we're going to make these on, uh, Karina's going to show us, uh, and we're all going to make one if you want to, uh, on June 8th when we have our Art for the Ages. So that's going to be your make and take little group. And uh, the feathers, again, remind us of the breath of air that comes from God himself. Okay, so we're going to be making things. We're going to be looking at uh, our artists and all that they're doing. We are also going to be eating. <laughs> How can you have a gathering if you're not eating? And it's going, we're going to have fry bread and wild rice soup. Mm, doesn't that sound good? So we'll have that going on, and we're also going to have some music. We will be having people playing uh, Native American music for us. So uh, we are designing an afternoon for you that you will not want to miss. And it is on June the 9th, I believe that's a Thursday. It starts at 1.30 in the afternoon, and it will go till 6 o'clock. Art, food, music, and dance. We'll also have that uh, make and take where you are going to be able to help make your very own dream catcher and bring home with you so that you too can be blessed with the goodness of God upon you. So we invite you to come and be a part of this. It's going to be very educational. It's going to be interactive. You'll be making a dream catcher. And I just wanted to, and I do have a few books. We even have a Tim Kessler in town, who has had a book published, I'd like to just hold it up, and it's called When God Made the Dakotas, a wonderful book, beautifully, beautifully written and beautifully illustrated, and we'll have these on display, a couple of different books, but I wanted to share with you a little couple proverbs. This is called The Soul Would Have No Rainbow If the Eyes Had No Tears. And these are Native American proverbs. So let me finish with a couple of proverbs. From the Pueblo Indians, we have, Never go to sleep when your meat is on the fire. <laughs> I think that's a very good proverb, isn't it? <laughs> and this one says, from the Dakota tribe, We will be known forever by the tracks that we leave. And isn't that true? 
And another one says, As always assume your guest is tired, cold, and hungry, and act accordingly. That's from the Navajo people, and we invite you to come and spend time with us the afternoon of June 9th. Art for the Ages here at Emanuel Community, right in their Forest Conference Center. Come and join us.